Good morning. Welcome to the Good Life Meditation for today. Now, I'll have to make this one a quick one because I got a late start. I was uh, listening to my Bible verse that was um, uh, Joshua, Joshua 17. It was the uh, verse where um, David slew Goliath of all things. Very interesting. Kind of a long one, so it, it took me past my normal stop where I usually start my, my Good Life Meditation. So let's begin. So this is uh, what I do every day, and I'm going to try to mix it up. I realized that now that I'm doing this out loud again for the camera, I realized how, how kind of I've got it down by rote. Being, you know, I'm just saying almost the same thing every day at some points. I want to break that up. This needs to be <clears throat> a reflective activity where I'm, I'm not just saying, you know, speaking my 6 and 20 out loud, but actually thinking about them and considering them, looking at them from new angles every time. You know, it's a little hard to do that when I don't have much time. It's um, 5.14 and my navigation says I'll be at, at work at 5.31, so I have 16 minutes. Uh, is that 16 minutes? No, 17 minutes, so here we go. So, uh, my six objectives of life. The first is to be ready to be always ready to die. To be in a position at this very moment that if I take my last breath, my heart gives out, the stroke comes, uh, aneurysm, whatever the case may be, you know, I, I, I have an accident, terrible accident on the motorcycle, whatever the case may be, as I as I tumble down the road, disoriented, you know, my bodily, my body being broken up as I go, that I am not. Well, I won't be thinking about much. It'll be very crass, but I, but I won't be thinking about. <laughs> basically, it's kind of a stupid. Here I am. I'm trying to be new and unique, and it doesn't come out so well. But I'll just that I can pass away in good, f feeling good about the moment, that feeling good about my life, that I have left very few things, very few stories unfinished, namely, my personal life, my family life, and my creative life. And I think I'm doing pretty good with the family and creative. I have work to do on the personal, I mean on the personal, the personal being of course my, my affairs and finances, mainly the finances. I would like to be in better shape financially to ensure the security of my, of my wife and daughter. So I must continue working on that. Two, the good and effective use of time to not let these moments pass poorly. I did something yesterday that was such a good, oh, I remember what it was. <clears throat> I was reading uh, one of my favorite books, Nathaniel Hawthorne's House of Seven Gables, and I was on my daily walk at work, my, my, my um, break time walk around the block, and I was reading this one passage, where it's a passage about Phoebe and the f photographer and how he had just read her his story about uh, about Mary Pension. I hope I'm pronouncing her name right. Anyway, it's just such beautiful writing. And I was just so struck by the beauty of the writing. And I stopped, I had to stop in my paces while I was walking and just reflect what, what a good use of time to have, to have read that. I mean, I could literally carry that book with me and open it to any page and be treated to beautiful writing and beautiful thought and, and, and such eloquent, work, eloquent language. What a, what a beautiful use of time. If only my, all of my moments could be so well spent and not just passed as though, as though I had eternity waiting, waiting, waiting in the wings. Number three, the cultivation of good emotional reactions. To react well to the circumstances of life, in particular to the surprises. It's easy to react well to when things go the way you expect. It's a little harder when life ambushes you. I think that's a pretty clear-cut um, objective. It's, it's a little easier to put into play when you reflect upon it. When I, when I shouldn't say you, when I, when I, because this is, this is, I, I'm try, I don't want to make this this good life meditation a lesson, so to speak, even though I share it. And I do share it to be that as such, because I, I hope that I can 
I can, it took me a long time to develop, get to a point where I could develop this 6 and 20, and I hope that it might be helpful to others. But I, I need to operate, this, this operation is a self, is a self, uh, I'm a, I have to reflect upon it as, as I'm applying it to myself and find, weed out the weaknesses. It's easier to weed out a weakness, especially useful to weed out a weakness when I, when I can use my own, uh, the anecdote of my own life as the measure of that, of that, uh, of the, the measure of the quality of, a, of an objective or a principle. I'm getting off track, but anyway. Good and effective use of time. Three. The cultivation of good emotional reactions. I already, already, I was already on that one. Sorry, but just react well to life, and it's easy when you, when, when, when. What I was trying to say was, when I reflect upon this every day, it's, it's amazing how quickly that reminder pops into my head when something surprises me, and I, it's almost like a little, a little angel. Dare I use that example? Popping up on my shoulder, saying, "Remember to, remember to re react well emotionally," and I can, I can then uh, buffer and hold in, temper my emotions, uh, and let the moment pass and then ask myself how could I proceed better and whence whence this whence this emotion came too next is uh, number four the uh, performance of good actions just doing good things throughout the day and number five the um, uh, wait a minute I come off track hold on sorry always ready to die good and effective use of time Cultivation, uh, development and maintenance of good life, that's the one I missed. Number three is the development and maintenance of good life, good sound life principles. That's just reflecting on these six and twenty that I'm doing now. Then comes the cultivation of good emotional reactions. Then comes the performance of good actions. And then six is the um, recognition of true limits and true opportunities. Not fooling myself into pursuing objectives that are goals in life that are probably not realistic while at the same time uh, not uh, not stifling myself from things that are indeed keep I am capable of doing and I like the example I used yesterday I'm sorry I just can't think of a new example yesterday of, um, of I may not be able to go to the Olympics but I sure can attend the Olympics uh, that's a good example uh, of that if I do say so myself Number, now let's get on to um, my 20 uh, principles. First is the principle of war. I wake every morning ready to go to war with myself and everything that I hold dear. I don't want my principles to, to support me in a, from a protected, reverenced position. You're reverencing the principles, but from a position of having withstood the battery and assault of my own reason upon upon those pillars, and if they're still standing at the end of the day, then what a what a worthy what a worthy support for for a, a well lived life. Two, reason. Reason, of course, is the application of our of our intellect, our ability to to uh, consider and think about the quality of an argument using honesty and objectivity to determine if something is true. Reason is the instrument that I use to go through life. And I use that because nothing is better. Emotions are not good. Other than they can be, uh, you know, good rough guides and signposts pointing the way. But, the, if, but to prove the case, you need reason to prove the case. And those that argue that there's the, that there's a world, a, a magisterium, that is beyond the scope of reason, I would argue that, to please show, show me some, some evidence that that's actually true, other than your feelings, if that's the case. Feel, feelings are not enough. So just having a sense that, that there's a, a spiritual world out there that, that is beyond, the, the, beyond touch of reason is a nice thing to say. That's another thing to show is true, to demonstrate is, is, is real. And until that's done, I'm going to operate as though that is, isn't the case. Next is um, uh, four, is uh, number three, uh, yeah, four, no, three, the homunculus, the little man or woman who lives behind our eyes. Just a reminder that we, we don't have, there's no reason to think we have a soul. That's a nice concept again. 
So the one thing to one thing to state it, it's another thing to prove it. Since no one's been able to do so, there is no Nobel Prize for the demonstration of the heart of the seat of the soul in the human in the human body. Um, I am going to operate as though there is not a soul, it's, but instead this thing that is me that lives seems to live with within my head, peeking out between my eyes and pulling the knobs and steering the steering the levers would be in my head. That's what I call the homunculus. And the important thing is that it dies with me when I die. It doesn't carry on. So there's there's no afterlife for for, for me. I'm, I, my mortality is all I've got. So so it appears. That's the operation. That's the operating standard I'm going to have until, until somebody can show it's otherwise. Next, the home of good and evil. Good and evil reside with the homunculus and die with the homunculus because they're opinions. When the last human being dies upon, dies off, so will the last uh, human concept of good and evil die away with it as well. It won't, it won't linger, linger out, linger in the universe. Next um, is uh, the atomic principle. No, the home of uh, good. Oh yeah, that's it. Purposeful purpose number five. Human beings have two purpose. One is biological to have to stay alive and to make new life. The second is something that I make up, which is. Uh, the purpose of being a virtuous man or woman. To, to, where virtue is defined as the improvement of, the objective improvement of well-being. For example, having clearly drawn lane lines on this freeway is an improvement in well-being that's going to make the traffic flow better, reduce the chance of accidents. It's a good thing. I can argue that that's a, that's a virtuous thing to do, to make sure that the lane lines are well drawn on this freeway. So I can go on and on listing these things, and you can you can make it. It's, it's virtue is is something that you can make a case for that improves the lives of as many as possible, and not just humans. I gotta go fast. I'm really running out of time. I gotta go very fast. Next is the atomic principle. Everything is made of bits and pieces, small little atoms and molecules, and where we die, it all the whole scaffolding falls away and gets reused, and some of the energy poofs out into space, forever gone, <laughs> lost entropy. Next is the principle of nature. Everything in the universe, including you or I, have some nature. And that nature, if we understand what it is, we'll know what to expect of those things and those people, including inanimate objects. They have a nature as well. Stones have a nature. So it's good to keep that in mind, to figure out, to, to ascertain the nature of things. I do that before I go to every meeting. I ascertain the nature of the individuals who attend the meeting and the organization itself and the nature of the project that we're working on. Next, I have to go very fast. Maturity, uh, it consists of wisdom and fortitude. Maturity is a hard-won condition of having experience and the will to utilize our, our understanding our, uh, that we've gained through life to live better. Going very fast now, the social principle. Human beings are social animals. We need one another to survive. And it's a worthwhile thing to live and work towards good social ends. Next, the Feast of Ophel, number 10. Human beings give off waste and byproduct in the course of our living. That I call that the, the Ophel. The, you remember Ophel is the byproduct of butchery, right? All the stuff that goes into making sausages. There's not much good use for human offal. It's with the anger and upset that we spew out into the world. The curious thing, though, is that unlike a, uh, an eyeball, if a butcher dropped that out into the street, someone someone wouldn't pick it up and eat it. But we, we're, we're very keen to pick up each other's offal, our anger, frustration, and all that stuff, and consume it, and then get angry ourselves. So the trick is to, one, not give it out, and two, not consume it when, it when we come across it. We live better that way. Next is uh, temperance. And the sub-principles of suffering, simplicity, and apathy. Temperance is our controlled consumption of all things. Food, drink, work, play. And we can do that by through... We have to remember that we will suffer when we do that because we're denying ourselves what we want. If we live a simple life, then by nature we're living a tempered life. Temp and uh, apathy is the ability to recognize what is and what is not within our control and to work accordingly and to, and to not get upset by things that are not within our control. Like a sudden downpour of rain is not within my control. No need to get upset, but I can take action to, to, to respond to it. I have to go very fast. <coughs> uh, agency and the great indifference, number 12. You and I are agents, all life are agents. To subtract out, all, subtract out all the agency, all, all the life in the universe, and we're left with the great indifference. An awful, amazing, astonishing, frightening truth. It's the universe without God. So if you want to have love, companionship, and some meaning in your life, we need to look to one another uh, and ourselves to find those things. Next is... Um, uh, 
is the best seat in the house to not want to be anyone else be anywhere else or be do anything else but to be okay with just where I am next is the path of wildness recognizing when a decision needs to be made to allocate time to make that decision and when that time comes to either give ourselves more time or make the decision the point is to not let that linger on forever if it's something decision or if it's a worthwhile decision eventually we're going to make that decision if we don't have enough facts Use our gut, allow our gut to help guide us, recognizing that gut decisions are subject to error. And though it may lead us off a cliff, there's virtue in moving forward rather than being stuck in a quagmire of mud and indec indecision. Next, in the path of wild is not for everybody. There's lots of people who would be quite content living in a, in a squatting in the mud all their life. Although I don't know, I would even say they're really content. Not to go very fast. Um, the risk of avoiding risk, the surface level risks of life, or the things that we tackle early on, education, m money, and a companionship. I would argue that there's deeper level risks in life, and those risks are not living a, an interesting um, a life of pursuing meaning and uh, self and, and finding some purpose for our life, and some 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 art, some some interest. And uh, so I want to say, give yourself both of those. Give yourself the decade of the 20s to pursue, pursue your art, your interest, become, become an interesting person. And then later in life, you can, and go as far as you can with education. And then later in life, pursue the more practical things in your 30s. Find a spouse, get a career started, and all the like. There's lots of room in life for both. For, you can have both. And you'll be a, you'll, I think you'll enjoy life more in the long run. It's a rare person that can do both. I certainly am not one of those persons. <laughs> I failed at that. Um, next is, uh, and I'm, here I am, my last off ramp. I have to go, I'm just going to try to wrap up. Here, I'm to use a little temperance to control my emotions. I don't know how I'm going to be able to get uh, six principles out uh, in, in the off ramp. But here we go, I'm going to do that. And I have a, a training starting in 28 minutes. <laughs> so, next to uh, temper after temperance is. Um, uh, sin and damnation, there are five sins in life, in my worldview. These are all the same thing. Falsity, credulity, faith, superstition, and dogma. And when we indulge in those things, we are basically living a false life. Um, beware especially faith, which is uh, a sin that masquerades as, as around as a, as a virtue. Ask, ask your, ask your, uh, claim truth to sustain itself, to, to demonstrate how it can stand on its own two feet. <coughs> don't, don't rely on uh, authority, dogma, or tradition to do, this, to do the uh, substantiation for you. Next, um, uh, complete oblivion. When we die, we are completely wiped out. Our, 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 who we are is wiped away when the homunculus dies. Our body then decomposes away. And that fact tells us that there is no chance for final reunion after with the ones we love after we die, no reconciliation with those whom we left on bad terms, and no chance for final justice. So seek those things in the here and now. Great life adventure. Give yourself a, a, the decade of the 20s, if you can, to uh, have as many adventures as you possibly can. Take some risks. Become the most interesting person at the cocktail party, like I like to say later in life. And enjoy your life. You'll pay, they'll pay great dividends later. Next, um, the season of philosophy. It's a time to uh, reflect on uh, what we've learned along the way and to record it for the benefit of our family and loved ones and others if you choose to share. When the words come, write them down. So once the words are gone, you, uh, they usually will not come. The words that will come in your 20s will not be there in your 30s and so on and so on. Hey, I'm almost there. The uh, next last one is um, the arena and utility. Life is an arena for the uh, uh, execution of our principles and objectives. Ah, heavy bike. And um, these, for my case, these 6 and 20 are my... Uh, utilities. They're the tools in the toolbox that I use along the way. And with that, I am at work. I made it. I somehow, isn't that amazing how you can do that? And just then kind of uh, uh, knock out the last six. Did I just do uh, Did I do six in one off-ramp? That really tells me I'm, I'm a long-winded uh, guy getting my lunch out of my pan near here. Is this camera still on? Hey, it's still on. 
Cool. So now I'm going to go over. That's where I work. <sighs> Looks like I'm the first one here. I've got a, a training class that starts at uh, 6 a.m. So, um, and it's, what is it, 5.35 or something? So it's give me time. I'll walk over to Jack in the Box, get myself a, a, uh, a coffee, get upstairs. I work up on the fifth floor. Get upstairs, get my, cu <coughs> my computer fired up and start that training class. Thanks for joining me for the Good Life Meditation for today. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Make it a good life. Take care.